I'm Dala, and today I'm working on BMW i3 battery integration for the battery emulator project. Well, that was a mouthful. Uh, some of you might know Havrla, uh, which did the BMW i3 battery upgrades possible. And uh, Havrla uh, was very kind and sent me two of these 60 amp hour batteries in order to reverse engineer and figure out how to use them for home storage applications. So that's what I'm working on right now. And massive thanks to Havrla for this. Um, but I thought that I would not only show you that, but uh, in this video uh, I want to show also what's new in the version 5.0 of the battery emulator project. So a lot of things have happened, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the big thing you're gonna notice right away is that we now have a web interface for the battery emulator. This means that it's much easier to check on what the emulator is doing. Uh, you can check live data and uh, much more. So let me guide you through a few things. Uh, right now I'm actually using a fake battery just for testing purposes. So I just have it sitting here on my desk. So I'm not actually running this in a system. But uh, we have um, a place here where you can see the uh, live values that are being sent to the inverter. And then all the way at the bottom, uh, we have some extra options that you can do. Um, one of the really big improvements is that we can now do over the air updates. So that means that you can export uh, here in the Arduino IDE. You can actually export a compiled binary and then in the web interface you can just upload the file that means that you don't no longer have to have a usb direct connection to the board you can just do everything via your uh, network so that makes everything much easier another thing is that we now can change settings on the fly so um, in case uh, you didn't upload the correct uh, parameters or in case you actually want to make changes uh, later on you can do that for instance, if you want to change how much of the battery you're actually going to use, you can just go in here and you can edit. Uh, say I want to change it so I use 85 percentage uh, max on the battery. And there we go, we have changed it. Um, here you can also see I'm using this fake battery voltage. We can also change that in case you want to. This is good for integration purposes. But this is like really cool. And another thing is that uh, it remembers this. So if you reboot, uh, the device it will remember which settings you have uh, stored to it because we are saving it to persistent memory so that's really cool uh, we now have real sock and we also show the scaled sock uh, that's also a new feature in case some because some people didn't want to use a scaled sock so some prefer to use the real sock reported by the battery uh, another thing we have is a cell monitor uh, page and uh, in this page you can see all the cells of the battery. You can see the max voltage, min voltage, deviation and individual cells. And in case cells go too high or too low, uh, they will be painted red. So that's also a very, very nice feature. And uh, then also we have an event uh, view. Uh, like you see here, BMS is actually in a faulted state. And if we click events, we can see why. And uh, this is something that um, a lot of people requested because it was so hard to troubleshoot. But now you can see here that we have an event. We have a complete CAN uh, transmission failure, which is a very severe thing um, because no CAN messages can be acknowledged on the bus. And we can see here a timestamp also when the error occurred. So if you have some pesky, pesky problem that only occurs once in a blue moon, uh, then you can just go to this event view and you can check out what was causing the issue. So all in all, very cool features. Oh, and you can also reboot uh, the emulator remotely also in case you want to. But uh, this is really taking the battery emulator uh, to the next level. Another thing that I want to showcase is um, all the new components that are supported. We have so many new inverters that are supported and also new batteries on the supported list. Uh, for instance, the Kia e Niro 64 and the Hyundai Kona 64 battery is now fully compatible. And uh, we also have other batteries staging towards stable. Uh, like I mentioned in the start, I'm working on the BMW i3. And also cool that we can now use also soon the Volvo XC40 and Polestar 2 batteries. That's also super amazing. And also the 800 volt Hyundai, this uh, Kia e or Kia EV6 
platform is also integration ongoing for. So there are so many things going on here. And oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we now have emergency generator charging also possible if you have a Chevy uh, Volt Gen 1 charger or a Nissan Leaf uh, power distribution module. I think I will do a separate video on the emergency uh, charging because it's uh, such a nice topic also to have for emergency uh, use so yeah and finally a massive thanks to everyone on the discord server uh, that is making the battery emulator project more accessible to everyone uh, by testing things out uh, experimenting um, contributing to the code uh, contributing for like best ways to uh, actually integrate the batteries safely etc like this is so cool to see this community growing and yeah we're, like every day we are figuring out uh, something new so it's really really cool to see that so yeah i hope you uh, enjoyed this quick video this quick uh, development update video and yeah i'll see you in the next one doll out